Up next on Coastal Today, CCU students passionate about the fight to cure cancer. A controversial topic in K-12 education ignites discussion at CCU, and we kick off Shauna Clear football season ticket sales. Now your host, Robin Russell. Hello, and thanks for joining us. CCU reaches out beyond teaching to lead the way in education issues that affect learning now and into the future. The issue of Common Core Standards was front and center at CCU's Wheelwright Auditorium recently, and our own Dean of Education served as moderator. Dean Ed Jadala joins us now, and Ed, can you start by filling us in on Common Core Standards and why the topic has such a heated um, discussion? Well, first of all, the Common Core Standards are just standards. The intent is what do students need to know and be able to do. It's not any different than standards that other states have that we've had in the past going forward. The difference is I think the distinction between the Common Core state standards and other initiatives is that it's a national initiative and it's tied to uh, funding from the federal government. And so whenever you have, in fact, let me, let me pause here and say my own personal opinion, the worst thing that's ever happened to education is when it's become politicized. When it becomes politicized, the academic decisions are distorted. So standards in and of itself, you know, what students need to know, be able to do, trying to improve education, I think every parent, every educator would want that. It's when we tie in these tangentials that it becomes an issue. I guess Coastal acts kind of like a Switzerland sure. um, within our moderation and, and um, our feedback <laughs> that we give the, um, the county. Um, how did you moderate and how do we help these schools and um, district work through these things? And that was the title of the forum. The title yes. of the forum was Common Core Standards, Facts, and Myths. And as I said earlier, you know, when it becomes politicized, you have all these myths that become very prevalent unless you understand. The Common Core State Standards in and of themselves, it's not intended to be a curriculum. It's a guiding framework. Comment? Yes, no, no, <laughs> you keep going, I'm learning, yes. It, it, it's a guiding framework intended to be interpreted, translated into what is relevant and meaningful learning. Now what happens, the, the biggest key to the Common Core State Standards is the assessment piece. Yes. Whatever the assessments are that are being used to hold students and teachers accountable for these standards impact the curriculum. So even though we can say the Common Core State Standards are not a curriculum, it's a guiding framework, really the key is what type of assessments are expected are going to be implemented to assess and hold teachers and students accountable for these standards. And that's still being determined. Ed, how was, how was the outcome? How was the outcome in this um, forum? Received a lot of positive feedback. Uh, individuals who came to that forum came there because they were genuinely concerned about education, what students learn. A lot of them, like you, are parents who are, who are you know, deservedly important to them that they understand what the Common Core Standards are and how that impacts their, their children. So the, the reaction was, we've learned more. We have a better handle. It still doesn't mean that the controversy has gone right, away. Right. There are still issues. There's going to, there are going to be issues for a long time because we're rolling this out so fast. But we now know the facts. Well, we have some more. We have a clear idea of what the facts are. Um, Ed, with mm -hmm. your college teaching, uh, how, how, what is the percent now we make up in Horry County teachers from um, your college? I would say students who have graduated from our yes, college, yes. undergraduate degrees, and students come back into our graduate programs, the number I've heard is about 65, 70 percent. Um, how amazing. How yes. amazing. Um, so we look to you and your faculty for guidance and expertise. Um, do you see more forums being presented in topics this way that we did already with the Common Core? Absolutely. Uh, the original intent, again, of the, of the educational forums, I mean, the Common Core represents that beautifully yeah. in the sense that uh, community, educators, administrators come together to say, okay, what, what are the issues and what's the reality? 
Uh, the next form that we're anticipating, similar to what I just said uh, a few minutes ago, is we want to have a form that focuses on assessment, evaluation. Yeah. You know, what that means, high stakes tests. You know, what that means regarding curriculum and instruction. And how do we move forward with that? How wonderful. I love mm -hmm. seeing you guys implement these um, sessions. Um, mm -hmm. Congratulations on all the success. I heard that you were very good in that forum well, thank uh, with you. the Common Core, <laughs> and I look forward to hearing you speak again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Up next on Coastal Today, a connection that can make all of the difference in the success of a college student. Welcome back to Coastal Today. Those first few months of the campus experience can make all the difference in the success of a college student. Great first year advising helps a student navigate university life and establish great habits for long term success. Kelly Lynn Moses Dolphy serves as academic advisor for the College of Science and she's here to share her perspective on getting a great start at CCU. Welcome to the show, Kelly. Hi, Robin. Great seeing you. You too. And I know that academic advising is very, very important. Why don't you share why it's so important? Well, we really try and um, take the student from orientation all the way through their first year. And that could encompass um, academic questions, social questions, questions about hair products. You never know what you're going to get asked. So it's a little bit of parenting, a little bit of being um, a trusted adult in their life. Um, now, Coastal has done it several ways. Right now, we have first year advising. Mm -hmm. And you are one of the first year advisors. And you have, I think, about 250 advisees. Yes. Um, walk us through when you first see them and to when you give them away. We first meet them at orientation in the summer and we're trying to give them a realistic picture of what a schedule could be like and giving them information that they can use. Um, and then we continue working with them, planning their next um, semester's classes and just trying to be available for them for any questions that may come up. Now, when you're working with a student, you really try to set them up to succeed. We you do. know, if you have a student that's not a morning person, we work right. for other classes. Right. What are some right. of the needs and the specialties that you do for each individual student? Well, one of the things that we've done different um, recently is we revamped University 110, and I know you're familiar with yes, that class. Yes. And so we put a component of experiential learning into it. So the first eight weeks we're doing the transition issues, and the second eight weeks they're out actually interacting with faculty. And it's really been great because if they weren't um, taking a science class that first semester, now they have a connection to the faculty. Um, how important is that connection with faculty your first you know, year? They crave that. They want it. And sometimes um, they're intimidated to you know, approach a faculty member or something like that. So this has really been an entryway for them to get to meet people. Um, also, speak of some of the important deadlines that come about during advising. I mean, what you as an advisor right. is responsible for telling them. Well, we keep um, a blackboard, which will now be Moodle yes, shortly, yes. Um, giving them important dates, like the last day to drop a class, um, you know, when um, finals week is approaching, when midterms are approaching, some study tips and things like that. And those sound so trivial, but those are very large and a lot of times well, freshmen don't get that get, information. They get busy and yes. they, they forget to look at other calendars like the registrar's calendar and so I think hopefully they look at, you know, when they see my name, hopefully they open that email. Um, what are some of the other issues in advising that um, we as advisors have to be real careful with? Well, it, it depends. Um, I know that I tend to think my experience is the same as everybody yeah, else's. Yeah. And so sometimes we have to remember these students are coming from a long distance sometimes. Sometimes they're homesick. Um, sometimes they think they want to be marine scientists, but they've never been out on a boat. And so um, through the experiential learning, we give them those opportunities to make sure this is what they really want to do. So they can make those decisions they earlier can, and not... rather than be a junior or senior and decide, oh, I'm not sure about this major. That's a parent's worst nightmare It sometimes. is, it is. Um, what is it that makes you such a great advisor? I mean, it's not for all. And you handle 250 students with ease and grace. Oh, thank you. Well, I enjoy it. I like the students and it's fun to be um, part of pop culture Yes, because yes. they keep you current on what, what's going on in the world. Uh, well, Kelly, thank you for joining me today and thank you for all your hard work. It is thank what, you, um, as a parent, it, I hope my child lands on an advisor just like you. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up on Coastal Today, passion runs deep for CCU students working to help cure cancer.
Welcome back. Relay for Life is known nationwide as a premier opportunity to heighten attention and raise funds in the fight to cure cancer. But something you may not know, many CCU students are passionate about curing cancer, and they throw that passion into CCU's annual Relay for Life event. Dalen Rehlinger and Patrick Kiesler are two of those students fully dedicated to the cause. Welcome both of you. you. Uh, Dalen, let's, let's start with you. Tell me why you care so much about cancer. Uh, it runs in my family and we've lost a lot of people to it. So it's just something that I'm really passionate about and I want to find care. And Patrick, what motivates you to work so hard on this event? Like Dalen said, it does run in my family as well, but I want to create a world with more birthdays and I want to celebrate those birthdays and create a world with more hope. Oh, how wonderful, how wonderful. Well, tell me about how this year's went. It went well. It went really well. We, went, <laughs> really um, well. we had over 76 teams come out, our organizations from Coastal. Um, from those 76 teams, we are currently at, I believe, we just checked before um, we got here and we were at $92,000. $92,000. $92, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good job, CCU. Um, now, CCU raises more money than a, lots of yeah, other usually, colleges. Yeah. Um, why? <laughs> you know, what is it about our students <laughs> that are willing to give back and to get out there and work hard? That's our secret to success. <laughs> we, uh, we like to keep it a secret. Um, but it's just amazing to, sh to see how many students truly care about this cause yeah. and hate cancer and want to create a world with more birthdays. And by them donating money and coming out and staying out there all night, and it is a long <laughs> night, it just shows that we are dedicated and we really want to end Absolutely. this horrible disease. Um, tell our viewers briefly what the, the day and night consisted of. We had a lot of games. Um, each team has their own games, but the committee put on a wing eating contest. Um, they had Zumba. They did a drag show. Um, what else did we, we do? We uh, do, like you said, Zumba. We also have uh, morning yoga. Yeah. So yeah. we do Zumba to pump you up, and then um, around the earlier hours of the morning, we'll do yoga to bring you back down yeah. and relax <laughs> you and everything. So it's a 24 hour yeah. event. We start no, it's at 12. 12, 12 hours. hours. Okay. We start 12 hours. at 7 p.m. on a Friday and we go until 7 a.m. the next day because for one night, um, cancer never sleeps and so for one night neither shall we. Um, I understand that you're already getting plans ready for next year? <laughs> yeah. We are. We are. Um, we have just elected the new committees, um, yeah. well the, the new exec board for the committees and Daylin is also one of the co-chairs and I'm the student coordinator for oh, Relay. How wonderful, how um, wonderful. But we are getting revved up and we have a lot of plans for the summer. Okay, how can you make it bigger and better? I, I don't, how? I mean, what, what? are you shooting for the moon now? <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're shooting yeah. for the moon. And um, <laughs> something that we want to try this year, or for next year is we want to try and compete with another school. So yes. we want to hopefully Skype with another school and throughout the night. I love that and see how they're doing compared to us. Um, congratulations, Thank both you. of you. Thank you. I can't wait to see what happens for next year. Thank, Thank you. you. When we come back, the clock is running as Chanticleer football kicks off season ticket sales with a bonus. It's hard to believe it, but CCU is gearing up for football season. We know it's true because season ticket sales for the Chanticleer football are now underway. Michael Jacobs is Assistant Athletic Director for Ticketing and Revenue. And Michael, welcome to Coastal Today. Um, two great football seasons behind us, a third coming around the bend with um, Coach Moglia and some great student athletes. It's got to be pretty exciting from where you sit. Yes, the job has gotten a lot easier since Coach Joe has gotten here and the success we're having is just unprecedented. Now, I think there's um, always something new happening with our tickets, and there's something new this year, I believe. Um, explain to us about the football tickets. Well, there's two things that we're doing new. One of them actually isn't even with tickets. It's uh, we made a football highlight DVD because of last year and the success that the team had. You know, we went to the third round of the FCS playoffs, yeah. played in Montana. The game was four degrees when we kicked off, coldest game in history. <laughs> so what a year it was, and we had so much excitement at the end of the year. We said, how can we take that excitement and put it on the front end? So we've made a highlight DVD and all people have to do is contact us and as long as supplies last, we're going to give it out to them. You're kidding. No. Anybody can have one. All they have to do is contact us. We'll send it to them. 
It's got all the information about seeing the team live this year, but it's a great, it's got Coach Joe, it's got the postseason, it's got all the highlights from last year. Okay, I'm calling when we get through with this show now to make sure I get one. Um, what else has changed? Now, the other thing that we're doing, this is just for season ticket holders for this right. year, is we're doing a commemorative ring. So we've won the Big South Championship the last two years. So this year we're going to do it so that the community can also partic participate. You mean it's going to be like a Big South Championship ring? It's going to look... I've always wanted yes. one of those. I can't believe that. It is almost identical to the teams. It has just two little changes. One, we had to take off the NCAA logo, and we changed the color on the front of it, just so you can make sure that it's a little bit distinctive. But it's going to be great. It's metal. It has weight to it. It's one size fits all. And it's going to look like the one that you have on your hand. The only difference between this one and that one is it has the Shauna Clear head on top of oh, it. Oh, how fabulous. So you get to walk around with with the Shauna Clear on your ring. Okay, so we have to have season tickets to order one of those. Yes. Okay. And again, like, like last year, we have the uh, Family Zone, which is very popular. Yes. Four season tickets for the entire family. So it's two adults, two kids, $110. Everybody loves that. We sell out every year, and especially with the commemorative rings, because every person will get a ring. We expect that one will be gone before, before summer really gets going. Oh, how exciting. Um, everything else pretty much the same. Um, how about all the... Um, uh, construction work going on over there? Or, um, do we expect anything to be cleared yet? There's a lot of construction with baseball. We're really happy to have baseball and softball getting a new home, getting back on campus. That's exciting for us. Uh, most of the construction will be done, but if people come, we also have an additional parking lot opening up this year. So we'll have shuttles so you can park far away. We shuttle you in. And then obviously, if you're a donor, you get a parking pass. The tailgating is huge. You have to get here early, but the tailgating is huge. Everybody wants to get out there and get out early. So we have that as well. And everything's rolling now, Michael. I mean, we can just call your people and everything's going, or we can do it online, but everything is up and running. Right. If they want to contact us, the phone number is 843-347-8499, or you go to our main website, GoCCU Sports slash tickets, has all the information, gives you all the options. And the great thing that we like to say is we have something for every budget. So starting at $60 up to as much as you want to spend. Wherever you want to sit and wherever you want to be a part of the action, we'll make it happen okay, for you. How exciting. And after two years, coming into a third year, I mean, I can't imagine anything any better. And I'm sure that we'll be better. So we better get those tickets now. You, you do want to get your tickets early, especially we're opening up with South Carolina State. We close with Liberty. It's basically a big South championship game. So the only way to guarantee seats for this is to get season tickets because we know that those games will sell out as soon as we put them on sale. Okay, Michael, thanks for joining us today. <laughs> Thank you. Up next on Coastal Today, we're going places with Martha Hun to meet an outstanding CCU graduate. Coastal Carolina University graduates are going places in this world. Let's check in with Martha Hun, who brings the story of an outstanding alumnus. We are at Dugshaw Stadium and so happy to be here with two of our CCU graduates who are also coaches for the Myrtle Beach Seahawks girls soccer team. We're surrounded by girls. They're actually working right now. And so we're so happy to be here with Mary Jo Hajak. She's the head coach and also Laura Weiler Stevens, who is the assistant coach. Thanks for having us out here. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we're hearing great things about you. So we came out to see what you're doing. And so I want you to first kind of set the set stage and tell us about your time at Coastal when you graduated. We'll start with you, Mary Jo. Um, I started at Coastal in 2001 and I graduated in 2004 with a psychology degree. And then I loved it so much I came back in 2005 and graduated again in 2007 with a physical education degree. And Laura, you graduated in 2007. Tell us about your time. Well, I graduated with a degree in sociology with a minor in psych and I was also a member of the women's soccer team. So did you invite Laura to come work with you? How did that work? Um, I don't know if I'd say invite more than uh, <laughs> begged her to come help me. <laughs> um, after, they, after I got the job as the head coach, I went directly to her and said, um, you want to be my assistant? Because I'm going to need your help. So. Love it. And it was a no-brainer for me. I, I mean, <laughs> I, I knew we balance each other out even personality-wise, and then um, I just I couldn't wait to even just get back into coaching. Well, we do have the girls behind us. They're working a little bit, working out, I guess you'd say. What do you love most about doing what you do every day with the coaching? For me, I really like building the relationships, like with the girls, um, like just hearing what they're going through even during the day and then also helping them to then refocus when they get out here and just let all that other stuff 
like not think about it and then just come out and and do what you love. And Mary Jo, you're a teacher also at Myrtle Beach Primary School. You're teaching phys ed there. What are you what what make the connection for us what it's like doing both? Um, I mean, I enjoy the teaching part of of my career um, just as much as this. This I come out here and it gives me a break, you know, from the little kids and I can come and and you know, associate with these kids and these girls and kind of pass on what I've learned through my um, athletic career and, and all that onto them. And then, you know, you're, you are exposed to these young people who are trying to make it in the world already. You know, they, they're going to head, many of them will head to a university, a college experience. What's your advice for them? I, what I loved about Coastal and what I tell my girls when they're asking, where should I go? Should I go to a big university or a small university? I just, I love the size of Coastal. I was able to build connections and relationships even with my professors to where, um, like, even the girls that they want to go on to grad school, you're going to, it's going to be easy to ask your professor for a recommendation for grad school because they're going to know you. You're not a number. And at those big universities, you are a number. They're not going to know you. And Mary Jo, what about you? Um, my advice would be to pick a university where they have your major or what you would like to do with your life. Um, you know, don't just go there because your friends are going there. Don't just go there because that's where you're expected to go. Um, and also to make sure that you're comfortable in that environment. Um, I mean, after the minute I stepped on Coastal's campus to visit, my dad knew I was going there. It just, it was comfortable and, and it probably was the size as well. It was a lot smaller back then, um, but I just had that, I just felt comfortable there. So I knew that that's where I was going to go. So. Well, we love that you're both here in the Myrtle Beach area, close to home at CCU, and we thank you for what you're doing for the young people today, both in primary school as a, as a mom as well, and of course with the Seahawks, I say ladies, but girls soccer team. <laughs> Thanks so much for being with us. Thank, thank you. you.